Old St. Matilda. Well, brothers and sisters, welcome. You know, it's a funny thing. I came to America when I was 18, and God knows I had to fight hard enough to stay here, and I'm an American citizen, and I'm a proud member of an American union, and what do I have sitting at home? A stuffed koala and a boomerang. <laughs> <laughs> i tell you one thing about getting old. It gives you memories. In fact, the older I get, the more I remember. Not what I had for breakfast, that can be a real tough one, see? <laughs> but of years ago, of history, which in this country is about as useful as a stuffed koala and a boomerang. <laughs> Especially if your history is of working people, of regular working stiffs. See, if I was here tonight to give a lecture on Thomas Jefferson or George Washington or Benjamin Franklin, there'd be a line of people up the street waiting to get in. Be a much more respectable audience too, not a lot of riffraff like you lot. <laughs> Well, of course, I wouldn't be here either. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, they might be great men, I don't know. But uh, John L. Lewis, Joe Hill, if I was giving a talk on them, we'd have a hard time giving any tickets away. And I know they were great men, see? <laughs> now, I say I'm a working stiff, and I am. But I have been accused of coming not from a good, solid, working-class background, but from the dreaded middle-class and you know what? I have to confess, it's true. <laughs> and when I say confess, I know what I'm talking about. I was brought up in the Catholic Church. At least, that's what my mother's side of the family would have you believe. was a choir boy. Four long years of choir practice and confessions. God help us. <laughs> you know, the hardest thing for a kid when you're in the confessional is to beat down the temptation to make a few things up. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to confess now, my father was three things. He was an Englishman, he was a Protestant, and he was a real estate agent. As to which is the worst, I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> Not only that, but my first job when I was 14, working for my father, was collecting rents, collecting rents from his tenants. Now, I'm not saying he was a bad landlord. In fact, he pioneered some low-cost housing, but he was a landlord. And some of his tenants were poor, and I was supposed to collect the rent, whether they could afford it or not. Well, I didn't like the idea of that, so I came up with a new plan. Sometimes I'd collect the rent from the ones that could afford it, and I'd lend some money to the ones that couldn't. It seemed fair enough to me. Somehow my father disagreed. So he came up with a new idea. My younger brother collected the rents and I went off to seek employment outside the family business. <laughs> of course, uh, this all was in Australia. Now, you do all know I'm Australian. Hmm? Not everybody does. In fact, a certain newspaper publisher, William Randolph Hearst, not one of my greatest supporters, <laughs> but then the feeling was mutual. And let me say that I am no, never have been, and heaven help me, never will be a newspaper person. <laughs> the newspapers are on the side of the greedy, at the expense of the needy. Now, they're on the side of the greedy for the very simple and understandable reason that they're owned by the greedy. But anyway, Hearst, in his papers in 1932, said I was a British spy. What the hell would I be doing in California in 1932 spying for the British? <laughs> and I have to tell you, mistaking an Aussie for a Brit or vice versa, it's an insult either way. 